Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to see if we can get this Subaru running. Now, I picked this Subaru up with no keys. Um, I do have a title for it. The engine is supposed to be good. The rest of the car is pretty rough. Um, for the price I paid, if the engine is good, then it'll make a good you know, engine swap for another car that maybe has a bad engine, a rod knock, which I do have another car, but I'm not sure which one's uh, in better shape. Now, this is the good side of the car. The other side is wrecked. Um, but the car is still drivable. So we need to make a key. Um, <clears throat> I got my leashy pick set. So we're going to try and pick this. If not, since I do have the title to the vehicle, I can, you know, request a key code from Subaru and cut a key based off that key code. Now I'm going to need the pin number if I want to use a factory tool anyways. So we may do that regardless of whether we can pick the lock or not. Um, without the pin code, we could probably use some aftermarket tooling to program the key to this, but we're going to try a couple different methods here. So I'll move you guys over here. We'll attempt to pick this lock. Um, I got to find my Houdini and, and spray this lock. I tried picking it at the uh, location of the vehicle, but it was full of dust and I did not have my Houdini with me to kind of clean it out. So we'll see what happens here. Vehicles that tend to use the, you know, keyless entry a lot the locks don't get used very often. So oftentimes they are still very stiff, they're gummed up, they're not broken in. Um, you can see the dust kind of stuck on this lock. The, this car was out in the prairie and uh, the wind's always blowing. So it was very, very gritty when I tried it out at the uh, location of the vehicle. So I'm just gonna flush this a little bit with uh, some Houdini. There's several different picks for Subaru. I think this is the uh, the NIS 17 or Datsun 17. That could be it. Or DAT. Um, basically, it's a four track high security key. We gotta make sure to get this leashy insert, inserted all the way into the lock. I think we're good there. Now, I'm not sure which way this lock needs to rotate, but since the car is already unlocked, it doesn't really matter. Now, also since the car is unlocked, if we can't pick it, we could take the lock cylinder out, see if there's a key code on it, and also disassemble it and just you know check the, the markings on the wafers. But we'll try, uh, we'll try to pick it. So we have an A track and B track, and we have two lifters, one for the left side, one for the right side. So depending on uh, you know, which keyways are populated, we'll have to work both of these through all the keyways until we get, it, get everything picked. So I'm looking for keyways that are you know, kind of bound up. Let me, let me find one that's not bound up, and I'll show you what happens if if we're on a keyway that we don't need to pick. So you see how that lever is spring loaded? There is no tension on that tumbler, so it's not one that is binding us up currently. So we don't need to pick that one. So I'm just gonna go down the list and find stuff that isn't springy. Like that one there is solid. I picked it, now it's springy, so we're not held up on that one. Lifting up on number five over here. I don't think that one's springy, but it's kind of hard to tell. We could still be a little bit gritty. I'm actually going to just try and work these, uh, these wafers up and down. Try and work that Houdini into them. So everything's reset and we'll we'll start back over here. Yeah, so that one that one actually is uh not bound up anymore. So if we would have started with picking that one, I think we would have had some issues.
And you kind of have to keep working from one lever to the other just to find which wafers are bound up. And there we go, we have, uh, we have this lock open now. So now we need to go through and you know, read our positions here. And I'm not sure if you guys can still see that or not now that it's moved. So you guys might be able to barely see it here. Of course, I did not bring the <laughs> writing utensil with me. So I'm just gonna grab a notepad on my phone. So remember we have two lifters. We have an A track and B track. This back lifter, the B track is up. Front lifter, B track is down. Okay, so this is behaving kind of like a Toyota Keyway. Um, I actually don't know if I am fully picked or not because we're stuck in the uh, kind of a eighth of a turn position here. So I'm gonna attempt to pick it further just in case this requires further picking. Okay, and it did. It, I just had to pick it a little bit further. Let's go back through and find our positions here. And they are, so we have a B3. One. Two. Three, four, and on our A's, we have a two, four,
three. Four. And a four. So now our tool is kind of stuck in that eighth position. We have to pick our way backwards. Now, the good thing when you're picking backwards after you've decoded it is you know what the wafer positions are. So you don't have to worry about overpicking it. There we go. So now I'll pull out my lifters. Try to get those all the way back to the edge of the key. Um, I do find that these, uh, or this particular car, my, my tool likes to get stuck in it. And I may ha actually have to get a pick to, uh... there we go. The dust cap is uh, spring loaded pretty tight and it catches on the lifter. But now that we have that key code, let's cut a key blade and see if it works in this door lock cylinder. I have the X-Horse set up with the high security key fixture here. I have the, uh, you guys are gonna, there's too much glare, you guys probably won't see that. But I have the Subaru DAT17 selected. It says to insert the key to the second mark. And we're gonna enter in our bidding, and then I'm gonna check the bidding and see if it will tell me if it's a valid cut code. Now, <laughs> what I don't like is it doesn't tell me which track is A or B. So I'm just gonna punch it in. It seems like oftentimes B is on top from other vehicles I've done. So I'm just gonna select our code. So it says that is not a valid cut code. So I'm gonna reverse my uh, a and B tracks. Okay, <laughs> I think I figured out what I did. I'm entering my positions backwards. I read my bidding from furthest in to furthest out, and I just entered it backwards. So I'm gonna reverse that. Four, four, three, four, two, four, three, two, one, three. Find bidding. Okay, so that is a valid key code. Um, I don't know if it's the right key code or if I'm still, you know, my A and B could be reversed. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a key and we'll try it in the door. We will cut key again. Cutting the other side. Okay, so we have a key now that has been cut. Now, of course, I forgot to bring a file with me, so I'll just, you know, scrape it back and forth on my trailer deck here. Take off any burrs or ridges. So I just shoved the key blade into this, uh, plastic head and it looks like we got it so now we need to try and program this to the car now I did go ahead while we were uh, waiting for the key to cut I submitted an application for the factory key cut code we verified it was correct or I verified it was correct and I got the immobilizer pin code so we can try using the factory software to program this key. But before we do that, we need to program the super chip that I inserted into this key as well. Um, it should read it, even though it's in the plastic head. If not, uh, I'll have to try and dig out the little uh, insert in there. Now, I just got the Autel KM100. So I'm actually gonna see if it can program this super chip. If not, then we'll use the key tool max. So I think if I, Cover over this, 
we can see the screen. So we're going to go to transponder function, transponder generation, and see if it has Subaru listed. Now, if not, we'll grab the other, the other uh, tool. Now, if I remember right, this is a 4D62 chip. But I wish that it would, uh, you know, let us enter vehicle information. And I don't know if this tool can only generate Autel transponders. We're going to open up the key tool max because I do have the X Force super chip in this key. We're going to generate transponder. Uh, we can search by car model. Subaru. So it says G3X Justy. Um, this isn't a Subaru Justy, but it says ID65. Now, I don't think that's correct, and I know I've run into this in the past with Subaru. I'm pretty sure that it is a Like a four, uh, I think it's 4D62. I've searched 4D in the past. So let's go 4D. So I have 4D, 60, 61, 62. Suzuki and Subaru is a 65. Okay, we have another one down here. I don't know why those aren't in order. That says 62. I think this vehicle is a 4D62. We also have a Subaru 82G. Interesting. Okay, let's go. Let's go with the 62. So key number one is a 17. Key number two is an FF. Now we'll have to keep that in mind later on because I actually just saw a post about this on Diag.net where someone had replaced the ignition lock cylinder and it came with new keys, but the keys wouldn't program. And the keys had an FF instead of a 17. Now, if it's all keys lost, you may have to go with a 17 to, to write key position number one. If you're adding a key, you'd probably be fine with the FF. So I'm not sure if it'll give us an option for that. Let's generate, let's go key number one. Okay, generate complete. Now just to see if the Autel can read it, let's go back over here. On our home screen, we're gonna go to reading and cloning. Let's read this key. So that's kind of interesting. It read this as a ID 62 plus 40 bit, but up here it says DST 40, ID 4D. Um, now we picked key number one, which should have started with a 17, but it's reading it as an FF. So I'm really not sure if this will program or not, or if that's one of the issues with this. Um, will it let us edit this key? Uh, there's more information here than I, uh, than I know what to do with. I was hoping that it would fill in what we currently have. Oh, maybe read all. Okay. So our P1 is an FF. Let's try changing that to a 17. Oh, and it says we can't because it's locked. Hmm. Let's switch back over to the key tool max. which the battery is dying on. And let's just read it with the key tool max. And it came up with an FF. So it, <laughs> this is frustrating because it was supposed to have it as a 17. And it says that the password is locked on this one as well. 
Well, all we can do is try it, see if it'll program. We're gonna try with the factory tool first since we have a pin code. And if it doesn't work, then we'll try the KM100. Now in my last video, we were comparing the Subaru SDI to the Kardak Plus 3. Uh, we did a function test, looked at some data, did a speed test on a full system scan, which is painfully slow with SSM3. This is also an SSM3 vehicle, Subaru Select Monitor 3. And this tool by itself has immobilizer functions built in. So we can try this to see if it'll work on its own. Now, since that last video, I received a Subaru Mongoose cable. So we're going to test out the Subaru Mongoose cable. Now it should have the same functionality as the Kardak Plus 3, but in a much smaller form factor. This isn't just a giant brick sitting on the uh, floorboard of the vehicle while you're scanning it, much more easier to use. If you're only working on Subaru, there's no point in buying the Kardak when, you know, this is a third of the price or less and it does the same functions. So we're gonna set up the laptop to work with this. Um, I'll show you guys how to do that. We will have to go into that configuration app and select the Mongoose instead of the Kardak Plus 3. We'll use SS SSM3 and attempt to write this with the immobilizer function. If it doesn't work, we'll try the factory tool with SSM3. If that doesn't work, we'll try this tool by itself. If that doesn't work, we'll try the Autel. Now this car was out in the prairie and it smells like it's a little bit rat infested. There's a, a nest in the back seat. I'm gonna try to stay out of the vehicle as much as possible. So we, we don't know if our key is actually gonna work in the ignition. I did put a new battery in it. I guess I will have to climb in there. It's a stick shift. I wanna see if it'll start before we uh, waste our time, you know, programming. Let's just see if it'll run. Okay, it does not start. The red security light is lit up. You know, but at least the other lights come up on the dash. So, you know, we know we, uh, our ECM and everything else is powered up. Whew, we're gonna get out of here. I'm always afraid that uh, rodents, mice, chickmunks, whatever, are gonna crawl out while I'm uh, working underneath the dash. Now, I have not connected this mongoose cable to my laptop before, uh, but I installed the drivers for the mongoose cable, so we should be good to go. If you haven't installed the drivers, uh, go to opus.com, go to support downloads, and then it'll have like the super mongoose. Okay, so since the uh, last video, I did add a shortcut to the configuration app. Let's open that up. Let's select the mongoose cable. We'll save that. Select monitor three. This is an all other model. Um, actually up at the top, we are the, selected with the DSTI, which is what we want. Let's go to all other models. Let's go each system check. Let's just make sure we can communicate before we go any further. Let's go into engine. Should pop up asking if it's the 2.5. Yes, it is. And let's see what codes we have. No diagnostic trouble codes. I'm kind of surprised because we have the incorrect key, but maybe it doesn't save codes in that module. Let's, uh, do we have immobilizer in here? Maybe integration unit? Oops. Oh, immobilizer right there. And I don't know if we can do immobilizer functions from this screen. Uh, typically you go back and when it says, uh, do you want to scan each module, you go down and you pick immobilizer. Okay, that's not, not looking good. Uh, no communication with the immobilizer module. Um, let's just go back. At least we know we can talk to the ECM. Let's go to Immobilizer. So we have two options. The Mongoose cable may show up under generic scan tool and we may have the best result with that. Or we can select Denso DSTI, which should point it to this, but I don't know if it's set up to point it for that using the Immobilizer app. So we're gonna go generic scan tool.
and we need to find the mongoose. Looks like we're good. We can talk to it. Immobilizer system, press yes. For audio, press no. And to go back, we hit cancel. We want yes. Is it a smart system? I don't think so. It's not a push button start. Uh, we do have the ignition turned on, so hit yes. See if we can talk to it. And it's possible that the immobilizer is on a uh, different network. And I would hope that the uh, aftermarket device is set up to talk on all the networks, but you know, sometimes there are certain functions that don't work with the aftermarket devices. So we're just initializing communication. <laughs> if this doesn't work, we'll, uh, we'll break out the Subaru SDI. We'll attempt it with that. Uh, what I'm hoping is that we can actually write a key to this vehicle. Okay, it says immobilizer, okay. Ooh, teaching operation code. I think that this is different than our pin code. And I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I know that there's a service bulletin that has it listed. And there's two or three different codes depending on which vehicle you're working on. This is a 2009 Subaru Impreza. Which VIN, I don't know. There's a wagon with a manual. The main page here, we're gonna to go to service bulletins and I'm just gonna type in, oh, there we go. Anti-theft system, replacement key and immobilizer information. Cause I know that it, there's a service bulletin or a tech tip that has the information we need. There we go, teaching operation codes. We have an Impreza 08, so 3781, 3781, press okay, okay. And then it should ask us for our pin code. Communication failed. I kind of, it could be because I waited too long. So 3781 is our learning code. No, yeah, 3781. If that doesn't work, I suppose we can try the 3178 just to make sure that I don't have some weird in-between vehicle. Generic scan tool. Okay, so 3781. And I honestly, I don't have a Denso DSTi to compare the speed, so I don't know if the Denso DSTi is faster than the Mongoose cable. I know when we did the full system scan, we were faster by about three minutes using the SDI versus Kardak plus three. So it failed once again. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna plug in the factory tool. We'll try it that way. And that will just rule out if, uh, if we have an issue with the aftermarket device or not. So I have the SDI plugged in. I did cycle the key just to make sure that, you know, changing interfaces didn't mess with anything on the vehicle. Uh, I know it's still selected for DSTi in the top corner, but the immobilizer screen is going to ask us which tool we're using. So 3781. That communication process was much quicker. but we still failed to communicate. Okay. So I'm gonna try this other code, the 3178. So this time I'm gonna try the different code, that 3178. So it knew right away that our code was incorrect. So 3781. Okay, so we're, we're kind of dead with SSM3. Um, I can't say that the Kardec or the Mongoose Plus cable was, was faulty because we can't even do it with the factory tool. So let's go back to our home screen. Immobilizer, 
auto identify because I don't know what kind of system this has. Turn on the ignition, immobilizer status scan, not supported, okay. Um, remote control learning. I'm not sure why we would do remote control, but it says all keys lost. Insert the key to learn, turn on the ignition, okay. Okay, so it says learning successful. You wanna learn the next one? No. Uh, I wanna try the key and see if the car starts. Um, it, can it be that simple that the Autel did it when the factory tool wouldn't? So I just turned the key off, turned the key on. No security light. Car starts up. Now it's running a little rough. But for the most part, I'd say the engine sounds all right. So for the purposes of what I purchased the vehicle for, I'd say that we're okay. Now I did see some smoke out the tailpipe. Actually, it's kind of coming by here now. It doesn't smell like burning oil or coolant. Um, I can hear the, maybe the cats rattling a little bit or exhaust shields rattling. But for the most part, the, the engine sounds okay. Um, you know, the, ex the smell in the exhaust almost smells a little bit like diesel. Now, I was told by the previous owner that the fuel had likely been siphoned out. So I put, you know, four or five gallons in it at the gas station on the way home. The, uh, the gas gauge reads a little below a quarter tank. So I think we, uh, it could be old fuel in the lines. That The smell of it almost smells like diesel fuel. Um, I wonder if somebody had tried putting some diesel in it or something other than gasoline at some point. But yeah, I still get a little bit of smoke, but not as much as when I first started it up. Um, it's hard to say. You know, the smoke I'm smelling now smells a little bit like oil, so maybe this thing does have some piston ring issues or some valve seals is issues, but after not running for, for this long, it's hard to say what all is gonna be wrong with it. But I think we'll wrap this one up. Factory tools failed us on this one. Um, not a thorough test of the mongoose cable because the factory tool wouldn't do it. The mongoose cable wouldn't do it. They're supposed to be basically the same thing. So it's not something that uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hold against the mongoose cable. If my factory super tool won't do it, I thoroughly didn't expect this to do it. And I'm quite honestly surprised that the Autel was allowed to do it and quite quickly as well. So if I was uh, you know, a locksmith and I had the factory tool, I would have been quite disappointed if I was out on a job and I wasted you know, 20, 30 minutes with the factory tool and the aftermarket tool can do it. But we find that all the time. And a lot of times I use the aftermarket tool first. If the aftermarket tool won't do the job, then I grab the factory tool and see if it will. But Kind of a lesson learned here. I'll have to try it out on another Subaru. Maybe it's just the older Subarus that you know my tool has is having issues with. Maybe this vehicle would have been better suited for a DSTi, but at the same time, this is emulating a DSTi and it still wouldn't do it. I don't know. What what's your theory on why I couldn't communicate with the factory tool to the immobilizer module? Security learning wouldn't work but the Autel did. Any other questions or comments, put those down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.